Hi everyone! So it's a beautiful day in my garden. I can't believe it. It's late June, almost July, and our weather has been so mild, so beautiful. It's around 11 o'clock in the morning and I almost still had a sweatshirt on. I just had to take it off. Um, this has been remarkable. I'm not complaining. <laughs> it's nice and cool. Definitely not complaining, but it is unusual. My tomatoes, nothing. I mean, usually by now we would be plucking them off. So it's been a really unseasonably cool start. Honestly, I think the plants love it. Those high temperatures, you know, here in my area, I'm outside the Sacramento uh, region of central, northern central California. Our summers by now could easily be in the mid to, to high 90s. It's a dry heat, so I know some of you who live in like Houston <laughs> where it's 100 and also humid, it's not that great. It's pretty hot. For us, the dry heat is not too bad, but it does stress our plants out. The dry heat really sucks the moisture out and they have to work hard to be able to look beautiful for us, which I appreciate. But that means that this beautiful cool weather is allowing my newly established garden to send those roots down deep and, um, you know, grow and they look beautiful without being stressed, which I'm thrilled about. So if you've been watching any of my uh, previous videos, you know that I recently went through uh, a big backyard redesign. And what I'm doing now is starting to look at bare spots and um, areas that haven't you know, filled in like I thought they would. Some of my plants died. I mean, that's just the way it goes. Either water issues, too much, too little, uh, maybe too much sun for some of them. So I'm starting now to refine my design. And I'm having a lot of fun. My garden is a reflection of me, which I think is every gardener's passion, right? Creating something that you feel reflects you and your, uh, you know, loves, right? So for me, my garden is a riot of color, as I call it, pinks and purples and whites, apricots, really the only color I don't care for in, in, in life in general, but in particular my garden is red. I don't like red um, and I don't like it in the garden. Yellow is a close second um, and I only tolerate orange if it's on the more apricot side of things. So you'll see that my colors tend to be all in that purple, pink, white, blue space. I do follow Laura of Garden Answer and she always talks about uh, making sure that your garden has the four major colors of red, yellow, green, and blue. That kind of is pleasing to the eye, that palette. I struggle. You know, I have some liriope that have yellow in them, and I don't really like them. So, you know, such is the way that it is. Uh, I'm creating a, a garden that makes me happy when I sit in it. So uh, if it doesn't follow garden design perfectly, well, so be it. So today's project is I picked up a few beautiful plants to um, uh, sprinkle throughout my garden. I went to my local nursery, it's called Green Acres, and I um, picked up a few things to fill in. So I thought I'd share those with you and uh, then we can plant them together. All right, so the first plant, or should I say, plants that I picked up to put into the garden are these beautiful lamb's ears. Uh, you know, there's just something special about the soft, velvety, green, silvery green leaves of a lamb's ear. They just make you want to stroke them <laughs> every time. I mean, I challenge anyone to walk by a lamb's ear plant and not bend down and, and rub its leaf. It's just instinctual, we all wanna do it. So I have these, but I love the, the silver green. It's a green plant, it's not silver. Some of the other um, silvery plants, you know, too silvery for me. I like the green of this. This is the uh, Helen 
what is it? Helen von Stein, which is a pretty, you know, typical lamb's ear variety. You hear about it a lot. Um, it's uh, a beautiful perennial in the garden. So the tag says it loves full sun. It uh, is a light drinker, so a little bit water, um, water wise. Though in my garden and in my heat, I have found that that's not necessarily true. I found with, uh, I had some of a different variety, but I did have some um, lambs here planted previously and they were on a drip that wasn't working all that great and while they got water it was limited and frankly they survived but that was it they were just kind of struggling on they weren't looking beautiful i mean this plant in order to keep it looking like this and growing because these will get big um it needs more water it's i wouldn't say it's a drought tolerant plant in my world anyway um it does get wider as opposed to taller. So the tag says only about 12 inches tall, um, but 24 to 30 inches wide. So it's a spreading, you know, mound of green and it will just give you a nice pretty sort of filled in look. The leaves are so broad uh, that it just would fill in a beautiful space or tucked in the middle of your garden or maybe even up front a little bit. Um, I have plans for these beauties. Um, I mean, look at these colors. They look good together with everything. Purple, red, yellow. I mean, they really could go beautifully with any color. So I have to walk around and see where I want to put these. And I'll likely put them in the same spot. The next plant that I picked up at Green Acres Nursery, which is my local nursery, which I love so much, is this fun kangaroo paw. This is Kanga pink kangaroo paw. I'm familiar with the red uh, kang uh, kangaroo paw and as you may have heard me mention I'm not a big fan of red. So when I saw this in someone's yard actually I was dropping off one of my kids for a play date and their neighbor had this in their yard and I took a picture and I was like ah I need this in my life. I got it because of the structure. Look at the tall structure. It gives you height without really taking over. I mean, look at these two together. Beautiful, right? Give you some structure where you've got the tall, the beautiful color on top, but it doesn't get huge. It doesn't take over. It doesn't spread, you know, like a maniac and bully your other plants. It's pretty amazing. Um, they don't give me any information on this. Kanga Pink Kangaroo Paw is all it says. And it didn't come with a tag, which that's one of my favorite things about Proven Winners. They believe that every plant should have a tag so that when you get, you know, the plant home, you have a reference and you understand how to better care for it. I've always been told that kangaroo paws are drought tolerant and light sippers. But, um, you know, we'll see. I think I have a drip system, we put it in. So I'm gonna test it out and see what it likes in our garden. I found that, certainly in the beginning anyway, as the plants get established, it's always better to keep them on a regular source of water. They're not really drought tolerant until they've established their root system and then the roots have gone down deep. Uh, so we'll see, but I just can't wait to put that and I have plans. I got three of these and I have plans for these beauties. Uh, the plans include these, Calabroca, Calabrocha, however you say it, Million Bells, everybody has their own, uh, Proven Winners line is called Super Bells. I got these at our local store just because I didn't want to wait. They don't really carry a lot of Proven Winners in my area, so I have to order online and I didn't want to wait. <laughs> I'm impatient. Um, didn't I just get finished saying I don't like yellow? <laughs> I don't, but I'm putting it in an area that has a hot pink verbena. I picked up another one to supplement one that, that broke. And I was like, what am I gonna do with this hot pink? I had some white 
hydrangeas planted next to it. Not a good combination in terms of water. The hydrangeas are getting burned. There really is more sun in the spot that I put them than I thought there was. So I was like, what am I gonna do with this hot pink? So I put the yellow next to it and I'm like, well, that's a fun tropical look, right? This hot pink with the yellow. And I picked up floss flower. So I just thought the yellow with the blue, with the hot pink, was a, just a beautiful combination. So here you go. Here is a sneak yellow. And in my area, sometimes these, these types of annuals, as they call them, do overwinter and manage to make themselves into a perennial for us, depending on the kind of winter we have. But I found they're just kind of a little scraggly so I tend to pull them anyway. Floss flowers are new to me. I didn't know much about them. Um, they're a sweet little annual. They're a, what they call a true blue. To me, I'm like, well, it's kind of purpley to me, but okay. Uh, its Latin name is agaritum. I don't know if I'm saying that. Agaritum? Agaritum, maybe. Um, so it's a sweet little annual that grows not that large. It only gets to be about, they say about, uh, let's see, how to grow. Plant in sun or part sun, six inches apart, grows six to seven inches tall. So maybe double this, right? They're not big. So I thought, oh, that would look so pretty. Right, here's my vision, the hot pink with the pretty blue <laughs> and the yellow and maybe even the pink kanga, kangaroo paw. I just thought that would be a really fun, pretty color combination. Honestly, I was hoping for a little bit of a different yellow. This is a little day glow. I would have preferred maybe more of a soft butter yellow. Maybe this is a little bright, but I just, it looks so sweet together. So I'm excited. The Calabroca, and the floss flower together in particular. Just a color combination I never would have done. So, so much for my I don't like yellow. <laughs> All right, also in my garden planting today, I have more of these penstemon. These are the native penstemon for California. They're, I'm not even gonna try. Oh, well, okay, I'll try. Heterophilus, maybe? This is a tough California perennial, native perennial it says. Light blue flowers with fuchsia pink throat and they bloom beginning early summer and they get to be about 18 inches to two feet, 18 inches tall to two feet wide and they attract butterflies and hummingbirds. They like sun and average water. So I have this planted, I've mentioned it in a previous video, I have this planted and I got stepped on a few times and it's kind of struggling along and you know it takes a while for plants to reach their full size. I mean I give plants usually a good three years right to grow into it. Um, I don't want to wait three years for that to fill in. So I saw these at the nursery and I'm like oh I'm gonna buy a couple more and just supplement that area. It's on my little mound behind me so on my little mini hillside I'll plant those in and create a better grouping of them than just that one lone plant sitting by itself. Also, I have some Clara Sage. My mom grew this for me. I have two of these. Clara Sages are a really kind of tall, narrow sage. So I feel like this is better in the back of a garden. Frankly, they're a little I don't know, shabby down here at the bottom of the base. They are all show up at the top. So this will turn into a absolutely stunning pink, like a blush, blushing pink, white to, bl to, to blushing pink. And when I saw it in my mom's garden, I just stopped me in my tracks. I was like, I have to have that. So my mom uh, grew me too and I'm gonna plant them. But they're, they're at the back of a garden because they're kind of tall and lanky. So I'll have to think about what I might put in front of it to hide some of this, you know, piece part down here at the bottom. So I have two of these to plant. Clara Sage is the name of it. Oh, are they so pretty? And then my mom also 
grew for me some Russian comfrey. Uh, I saw it growing in her garden and I said, oh, I have to have that. It was literally alive with bees. And I said, oh, I have to have that. I love the purple. Um, I don't know how well it would do here. My mom lives on the coast and they have a heavy marine influence. It's cooler, they get fog. Um, the UV is, you know, much less. It rarely gets hot. So plants tend to thrive in her location and struggle in my location. So it's a test. I just want to see how it does. If it grows, I'll be ecstatic because it's a beautiful purpley blue and it gets kind of big. So I'll see if I can find a picture of it and add it to the video, but it gets to be a pretty big mound and it fills in really nicely. So I think I have a couple of these and I have to figure out where I might put those. I'm not sure yet. And then finally, oh no, maybe not finally, my last one. When I was at Green Acres, I passed by a two gallon version of this plant and popped it into my, <laughs> to my cart. And then I found this uh, one gallon version of it. I'm like, oh, that's for me, I'll take it. Uh, this is a lantana. Lantanas do phenomenally well in, in our area. They are perennials. I cut them back every winter and they come back the next spring beautifully. In fact, I had some over in my fence pool area and they got too big. I had to take them out because they just crawled and they were falling into the pool and obstructed the walkway. So I had to pull them out. Um, but I picked this up, I couldn't resist. I don't even have a place for it yet. But this fuchsia, I don't know if you could see this fuchsia, this color, if it shows up. Oh. Look at how beautiful the color combination is. It uh, starts with this tangerine color and then kind of morphs into a maybe a darker, boy, rosy red and then into this deep fuchsia. And you can see that. Oh, it's that pretty. I just couldn't resist it. So I have to find a place for this as well today. Uh, and if I like it, I'll go back and get more because I've mentioned I'm impatient. I like things to look full and I don't want to have to wait three years for it to fill in. I'm silly that way. Okay, so next step. Oh, and I also have a flat of um, alyssum to fill in and give me some beautiful just color and foliage. Alyssum does great in our area. It's a tough plant and with enough water, it look, does phenomenal. And I'm just gonna use it as a, an edging border. Uh, alyssum smells good. The bees like it. So I just picked up a flat of it. So what is that one? There's six in here and I have six. So six times six is 36. I get to dig 36 holes and plant these guys. Um, I'm going to sort of sprinkle them around. Alyssum and Proven Winners has a nice version of it. This I just picked up through my local nursery. Um, but it says that uh, they like to be in sun or part sun, which is great. They get to be about 10 inches. Oh, excuse me, they said plant 10 inches apart. And they grow three to four inches tall. And they don't say how wide they get, which is funny. They, I've had amazing success where I've had alyssum plants that have been like this big and they last for me over the years. So while they are technically an annual, some of them have overwintered. And if you keep up the, the, the you know, the right amount of water and the conditions for them to be happy, they can last a couple of years. For me, it petered out after year three, I think. It just kind of had, it was done, so I pulled it out. But I love the white kind of poof that it brings to the garden. So I'm planning on using that as a, as a filler and um, edging border today. Okay, I am going to try and use my power planter today. Uh, usually I rely on my husband to do that and try and put it all together for me. I haven't done it myself yet, but uh, if you know Laura of Garden Answer, I'm like, if she can do it, then she's going to inspire me to do it. And uh, Janie of Dig, what is it, Dig Water, or Dig Plant Water Repeat, <laughs> if I hope I have it in the right order. She also has given it a, a whirl, so I'm gonna try it too. 
I have it. I just don't know how to like put the battery in and how to hook it up, but I'm like, okay, I'm a smart cookie. I can figure this out. So I plan on using the power planter and it's just really placing it is the, is the first part of it. And then I'll just put them in the ground and give them a little fertilizer and water them in. So I think that will be kind of a nice fun chore. I don't know why we call them a chore. It's fun, right? This is the fun part. So this will be a nice fun thing uh, for me to do this afternoon on such a beautiful, beautiful day. Okay, you ready? Let's go. Sure. There they are. You see them? That's your turn around. All right, there they are. Here's my new one, existing one, new one. So the existing one got stepped on a few times, I mentioned, and you know, that's the way it goes. But what I did was I filled it in and gave it some fertilizer and some compost so that one's coming back and then i have the two new ones look they look pretty and you know the super tuna vista jazzberry those are annuals i mean sometimes they manage to struggle on to the next year but uh, that's not my plan my plan is i just use them for some additional color and they will come out and as my perennials start filling in the placement of my annuals will change. I might put it next year a whole different place. And I have lots of opportunity. I mean, let's look at this angle. I have a lot of stuff that still hasn't filled in here. So all of that alyssum that I have, I can use to fill in here. I can also use it to cut the purple of the fan flower and the purple of the native penstemon. I love the hot pink. The hot pink of the jazzberry, because it has a cool tone, a cool pink, look how beautiful it looks against the purpley pink of that penstemon. Oh, I just think it's so pretty. And then look, even my dreaded kind of yellowy liriope looks beautiful. So this section is really starting to fill in. And with that white uh, Alyssum, it'll look good. And then you may have noticed in a previous post, I talked about water and the difference that it makes. <laughs> look at these two jazzberries. This one was struggling. Look at these two. Gorgeous. What's the difference? Well, I thought water, but as it turns out, it was not water. It was that this little one hadn't been planted uh, properly. It was half sticking out. So I dug it up dug a deeper hole, plopped it back in, and it's already looking better. The color of the blossoms are so much more vibrant. And look, I just have to show you. This is my salvia May night. The bees, the bees, they love it. They love it so much. They're over here, morning, noon, night. I have a couple more on the other side of the garden that are a little bit slower to get going. I started those as little plugs. This one I started as a quart. And then here are those new penstemon from this angle. Beautiful. Okay, on to the next chore. Oh, wait, what did I say? These aren't chores, this is fun. <laughs> okay, on to the next planting. I think I'm gonna figure out what to do with my garden bed. So I have my trusty helper. You want to grab those two kangaroo paws? We'll bring it over. Here's my thought. I have this hot pink verbena over here, which is very hot, <laughs> very pink. 
so I want those kangaroo paws I'm thinking more in the back so if I put those see and here's where one of my hydrangeas didn't make it so if I put these in the back I'm gonna dig this guy up and move it there I get my structure so my beautiful tall structure and then look do we love the pink against the apricot and even the soft pink against the hot pink. But here's the kicker. I'm gonna put that blue floss flower here and the yellow calabroca, I think. Mm, might be too much. I'm gonna lay it out and then we'll give it, a, give it a look and see if we like it. Okay, so I've gone and placed all the plants. So here are the two um, penstemon that I just planted. And then over here, I put two Russian comfries. This plant, not doing so well. And we checked the water, the drip is running. So I think it's just getting too much sun. So I'm going to, there's my garden cat. Um, I'm gonna pull it out, put it in my orphan garden and I'll put the Russian comfrey here. And it'll be a beautiful big blob of blue right in here so I think that'll look beautiful and then I've got this status or sea lavender in front of it so I think it'll be a nice backdrop to that and then over here I have a ceanothus which is California lilac a native that blooms in the spring and now it's done and then I have agara here so having a nice pretty blob of blue here backdropping and I've got my sky pencil and then I have ordered five pillar Rosa Sharon's in white and I think I'm gonna put them back along here so I think that'll be some nice tall structure of white going up and down here and then some blobbies of blue I think that'll look really pretty what I still am undecided about is over here this is where I initially think I'm gonna put the Clara Sage. If I put one of the Rose of Sharon's over here, how beautiful would that look? That blushing pink with the tall white structure. This is a Daphne. Blooms super early in the spring with gorgeous, like bright pink um, and white flowers. It's gorgeous. And when nothing else in the garden is blooming, that is. And then the sages will come alongside. And then I have my Bubblicious um, ground cover rose. And that's done. You know, I mean, we'll, we'll, it's big flush is over. It will kind of continually flush through the rest of the year, but not so much. And it matches. Like I think the Clara Sage, and I'll try and find a picture of it, matches this color. So I think having those in here somewhere. And then I'll continue working to fill in the, the blank spots. You can see there's a verbena that died. This verbena is not looking great. I need to check the water. So that's kind of the plan for this bed. And then if we go over to my tropical delight. <laughs> I'm like, oh, this might be too much. I have to tell you guys, I, I see the yellow from here and I'm like, ugh. I don't like it. <sighs> Looks so pretty against the blue, but it's a lot. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm going to take out and put in my orphan garden the two hydrangeas that have made it. That one I don't think is going to come back. Um, and I'm going to pop the kangaroo, the kanga pink kangaroo, into those three established holes. And then I have that fourth or no excuse me third bright pink verbena I'm going to pop it into here to fill in this corner and I'll surround it and what I'm hoping is that it intermingles you know verbena kind of tends to lay flat right it's already starting here starting to lay flat so having some things that pop up among it would be pretty I think the fan flower will grow taller where the yellow calabroca will or calabrocha however you say it 
will spill out and hide and maybe hide some of my weeds that I haven't yet dealt with. So I think that's the plan. Once I get those hydrangeas out and the kanga pink kangaroo paws planted, I'll have a better idea. And then look, I put the Helen von Stein lamb's ear behind it. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? Look at the kanga pink against the silvery green against my Atlas rose and my sage that beautiful fuchsia sage. I have a snow and summer here. Oh, I mean, that's going to be gorgeous. And see, that's what I mean about the yellow. The yellow with all these pretty purples and pinks and apricots just doesn't work for me. But what I've done to anchor that is I'm going to put this, and I don't know if I talked about this. This is the Lantana Bloomify Rose. Um, I talked about it. I don't think I said the specific name, but that has some yellow in it, right? Yellowy orange, I guess maybe. So I'm wondering if I'm carrying on the yellow and anchoring it with some yellow over here. And then I have some yellow of the Shasta daisies. Will that be enough to pull in? It's a really different shade of yellow. I have to tell you, <laughs> I'm in torturous indecision about this. And then I put the other Helen von Stein lamb's ear over here. Look at that. Oh, I'm so excited to get this in the ground. The silver green with the meteor shower verbena, which by the way, I have two more on order that I'm gonna to use to fill in this area. Next to my plumbago, that beautiful blue. And then I've got uh, royal velvet, Super Tunia Royal Velvet, which is not a Vista. It's a little bit more compact, so you see it's not really going crazy. And then I've got this flax here. Look at the pretty color combinations here. Now this is what I love. And I think to myself, now why would I go and plant yellow and ruin all this? <laughs> so we'll see when I get everything in the ground if I keep that yellow. I have yellow Meyer lemons. Do you think that might anchor the yellow? I don't know. So, and you know what, this is the thing about making it your garden. You do whatever you want. This, you know, making something that you love, that you feel good in, that you enjoy when you sit and look out at your garden. And if you don't like something, this was the best gift I gave myself. If I don't like something, I rip it out. I had, we moved into this house seven years ago. Uh, the previous owners had an absolutely stunning, gorgeous, cascading style um, uh, rhododendron. Beautiful, it was doing great. I don't like red. And I lived with it and every time it bloomed, I was like, oh, it's so pretty, too bad it's not pink <laughs> or purple or whatever. So you know what? The best gift I gave myself is I ripped it out. It's my garden. Just because, you know, it's here doesn't mean I have to keep it or I have to live with it. So I'm creating what I like to look at. And, you know, I want everything to be happy. And if I have a yellow plant in there that bothers me every time I come out here, then I'm not going to plant it. So we'll see. I know it looks pretty against that floss flower. So we'll see. I'm going to give it a shot. All right, let me get set up. I have to go feed my son lunch and go pick up my daughter at summer camp. And then I'm going to come back, of course, at the hottest part of the day. And it's warmed up a bit today uh, from this morning. Uh, and I'm going to get those in the ground. Okay. Okay. Well, a little time got away from me <laughs> as things happen to. It's a couple hours later, but I've got to get these plants in the ground because we have birthday celebrations to go off and do this weekend. So I've got to get them in the ground before we leave or they're going to not be happy in their cans. So we just got to get after it. Here we go.
Okay, here I am, hot and sweaty. <laughs> this is real gardening, y'all. Uh, let me share with you what I did because uh, I changed some things up. So, as expected, did not get to the yellow. I just kept looking at it and going, ugh. I love the yellow with the blue, so I'll show you what I did. Um, and, you know, I can still change things up. I spent a lot of time actually dealing with the drip. <laughs> so let me, so I've got my Helen Von Stein, uh, whatchamacallit, <laughs> lamb's ear. I put it here. It's going to look gorgeous next to my Proven Winners at Last Roses. And then I have my uh, Meadow Sage, I think that is. No, that's not Meadow Sage. That's... Uh, a salvia called, oh, is it skyscraper? Hmm, I'll have to go look it up, not sure. But look at that silver green with the fuchsia. And what's cool about this is even when the the blossom itself is gone, that carex, that leftover part, still keeps that pretty mauve. Oh, I just love it. So, oh, and I have a wayward wild blackberry I gotta go get. So, silver, apricot, fuchsia mauve, love it. And then, here's my uh, little bed that I went and tried to deal with today. So I pulled out the hydrangea, and when I did that, I noticed it was super dry in here. So I think I have a water issue. This drip just not performing. Um, or I'm not running it enough here, I'm not sure. So what I did was I popped in a few extra emitters to get some extra water in here. And I left it, you'll see on top, usually I bury it under the mulch. I left it on top in case I need to do some more. I just wanna monitor it for a bit. And you'll see, I just did the blue floss flower there. And I wanted to actually put a couple more in here. I don't have any drip in there. And I evaluated my <laughs> remaining energy. I decided, nope. And uh, my husband has left for the day. So I just said, I'm not going to do it right now. So I put it in my orphan garden and I'll deal with it then. So here it is. It looks a little messy whenever I water. Um, you know, I water everything in, all the dirt sort of drains out, so I got to get the blower and blow it, but I can't do that while it's wet. So it looks a little messy. But I think I like the floss flower, the blue with the pink. I know I like the Kanga pink against that lamb's ear and proven winner at last. Like this whole color scheme is gorgeous. I have to say that I'm struggling with this verbena. It's a very bright pink. Uh, when I ordered it, I didn't realize how pink it was. <laughs> so, you know, it's it's pretty pretty pink. Uh, and I'm I feel like it just clashes a little bit. So what else I did not get to was this lantana. Um, this is the Bloomify rose because when I took the yellow out of this bed, I thought maybe I don't need the yellow here. So I just want to sit with it a minute. And Lantana's tough. It can hang out in its can. It's a brown can, not a black one, so I'm not worried about its roots cooking while I'm gone. I'm going to actually just pop it into the shade uh, while I'm gone this weekend and um, come back. I'll probably end up putting it there. I mean, I think it looks pretty against that bright pink, but I know it looks pretty against the Atlas and the Supertunia royal velvet. So I love this verbena. Look how pretty this is. I always have to look up this one because I can never remember the name of it. And I think I'm going to put another one here where my wallflower died. So right now I am actually running the drip to give everything a good drink. I can see that the soil is pretty dry. So I'm going to let everything kind of Get a good soak right now, but oh, look how pretty that is. I just, the atlas with the silver and the pink, and that little pop of blue. I really think that this is gonna end up a gorgeous 
bed when it fills in. So let me take you over to what I did with um, the other lamb's ear. Here it is. Oh. The Blumbago, the Meteor Shower, the Proven Winter Meteor Shower Verbena, the Flax, the Super Tunia, Royal Velvet. I mean, oh, that's so pretty. Even this angle with another at last in the background. Mm, just gorgeous. So I'm happy with how this is filling in. Okay, let me show you what I did with the other extra Calabrocas. Okay, this is my herb garden. Actually, it's where I grow my lettuce in the winter because it gets tons of sun. You'll notice that I've got this gorgeous Chinese pistache. It's about 6.30 in the evening and the sun just comes through. It's so pretty. Uh, but in the winter, it's bare. It's a deciduous tree. And so I get lots of sun here. So I actually grow my lettuce in here and we have lettuce, fresh lettuce. So I put basil in here. Um, they probably won't grow great, but enough for my caprese salad. That's all I need. And I just popped in a little calabroca, right? Or calabrocha, however you say it. Right in the middle and it'll just spill over. So I thought that was pretty. And then let me take you through our wreck of a side yard to my orphan garden and honestly I was so pooped by the time I got here I just plopped these guys in I just watered them in so they're a little floppy they'll bounce back but here's my orphan garden I have a zinnia that's coming about to pop right there rhubarb eggplant peppers tomatillos azaleas so all sorts of beautiful things so those Three will do great, and when I'm ready to maybe find a better place for them, I can easily pop them out and pop them where I want. Moral of the story is today, don't take on too much. Uh, you know, we're not young spring chickens anymore. Well, I'm no young spring chicken anymore. I'm pooped. And, uh, you know, but I feel satisfied. I love... Uh, what I've done and I continue to see it grow and I love the freedom that just saying if I don't like it I'm going to move it take it out and not agonize about it I love the freedom that gives me I hope you take a moment to go out and enjoy the freedom that your garden gives you and enjoy just being in it